Welcome to my newest course where I teach you how to build a real-time chatting website. There's gonna be all kinds of really cool features. You're gonna have private messages, which means you're gonna have a friend system, so you'll be able to send friend requests to friends, very similar to how Facebook does it. Send a friend request, they gotta accept the friend request, decline it, uh, you can also remove friends. If you are friends, it means you can, you can start a private chat with them, just like Facebook Messenger does. You can send private chats between two users. There will also be a public chat, so that means a chat room that everybody can join in as long as they're authenticated as long as they're an authenticated user they can join in they can join this public chat kind of like how uh, twitch does it so like if you've ever been to twitch.tv and watched your favorite streamer uh, there's usually you know or there's always a kind of a chat section next to their stream where anybody can join and and chat along and we're going to be building kind of the same kind of thing with that and the third thing that we're gonna build using WebSockets is a notification system. So if you get a friend request, if somebody removes you as a friend, if somebody uh, declines your friend request, anything to do with anything basically, any, any friend thing, you'll get a real-time notification up in the uh, up in the kind of the header of the of the website, just like Facebook does. Also, you'll get real-time chat messages. So if somebody sends you a private message, you'll also get a notification, just like Facebook does. So you can like see kind of a preview of what that text looks like. You can click on it, and that would take you then to that private chat room. So there's of course lots more that's going to be happening behind the scenes. But um, I thought in this video, what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to break down the the project structure. So like, or sorry, the the teaching structure. So how I'm going to be teaching it, like step one, step two, step three, and so on and so on. And we're also going to do a demo. So I've published this to this project to a live website so that you can check it out before you do the course. And you can just play around with it and see if this is something that you're interested in learning how to build. So basically what I'm going to do is go through the, the teaching structure and also do a demo of this website in production. So let's go take a look. So on the left hand side here, I have kind of the uh, the features of the website. And this is kind of the course structure. This, this is the order that I'm going to be teaching it in. And on the right here, I have the actual website in production, which we're going to be going through it. So the first feature, the first thing when we develop this website is going to be user management, we need a way to Register users, log in users, log out, you know, change their passwords, uh, view account, update accounts, change their profile pictures, find other users, all of these kind of things. That is step number one. So let's go through all the features on the website related to all of these things. So here I have the production website, which is the website that you'll be able to build in this course. And at the end of it, we're also going to push it to production. So don't worry, I'm going to show you all that. So openchat.xyz, you can visit that and follow along with me if you like. Uh, this is the kind of home page, and we're going to talk about this later. But first, let's talk about the, the user management stuff. So I can either log in or register, first of all. Also notice if I try to participate in this live chat down here without being authenticated, it gives me an error and says that I must be authenticated. So OK, that's, let's go and authenticate. So if I click register, this is a pretty standard registration screen. You have email, username, password, and confirm password. That's how you register a new user. I am going to log in with a user that I've already created. So here's login. I'm going to log in with Mitch at Tabian.ca, and I'm going to type my password so that uh, you can't see it, and then we're going to log in. So there's my password, and also notice there's a reset password option down here. If you forget your password, that will send the user an email letting them know how to change their password. So let's click login. And once I get logged in, I get uh, navigated back to the home screen. So now I can participate in this private chat. So if I was like, you know, I can participate and I hit enter, boom, there's my message. And sometimes it takes a little while for the profile image to load. That's actually a, a pretty important piece of the course, actually, which we'll talk about later. I'm asynchronously loading profile pictures uh, in the background. So first it shows it shows that kind of uh, default image. So if I do test, there's that default image. And then it asynchronously loads that profile image just so the, the views don't get disrupted. But don't worry, we're going to talk about that later. So here's the view when I'm authenticated, I have two or three kind of options up here. If I click the first one, I can go to account or I can log out. Of course, log out will log me out. Account will take me to my account screen. So the account screen is going to vary depending on the like, I guess whether you're looking at your profile, whether you're looking at somebody else's profile, whether you are trying to update, there's a lot of variables here. So I'm looking at my own profile here. So I have an option to look at like pending friend requests. So if I click here, this is going to take me to the pending friend request page. So anybody who sent me a friend request and I didn't accept or decline, it takes me there. So I can either accept or decline that. I'm just going to leave it for now. I also have a friends option. So if I click here, this takes me to a view that shows all of my friends. So these are 
are all of the people who were nice enough to come onto my website and test it for me and send me a friend request. So now let's go back to the account screen. The other thing that you can do here is you can of course change your password and you can update your account properties. So if I click update, I can change my email, I can change my username, and I can also change my profile picture. This is a really cool feature of the user management section. I can actually choose a new profile image and I can crop it. So if I just go to, I don't know, I'll just select a random picture. Let's just select this one. And I can, uh, if, once I select it, it sets the preview, the, the actual resolution of the image to this kind of preview, and then I can crop it. And I have specific limitations set on how they can crop it. So they can only crop square images because uh, the rest of the project, the rest of the website uses these circular images. So if it was a rectangle or any other kind of weird shape, these circle images would look really weird. So I want to make sure that they only crop it to a square. So that's why I've uh, added this limitation that this must be cropped to a square. So if I click the check mark, that's going to do some processing in the background. So it's actually sav saving a temporary image. Whoops, looks like the CSS got messed up there. I'll just refresh it. It's actually saving a temporary image to my server. It's then cropping it given the boundaries that I've selected and then it's saving that new image to the AWS so Amazon Web Services where I keep my media files and there you can see my new profile picture is set it's also set up here so that did save correctly I'm actually going to change it back because I kind of like this one I think it's funny so I'm going to change it back to that one and crop it save it there we go again it's saving a temporary image that's why this takes some time it's saving it it's doing some processing in the background and then when it's done it's going to finish up. So that is the, uh, that's the account screen. The last option I didn't talk about was hide email. So if I click this and somebody else visits my profile, so let me actually just save this and go to my profile. If somebody else visits my profile, they're going to see this email hidden if I have that ticked. So as an example, let me search for uh, a different user. I'll just search J and that should bring up a whole bunch of options. If I was to click on any one of these, this guy's my friend, this guy's not my friend. So let's just click on this guy. Uh, notice that his email's hidden. That's because he has that, that checked off, that checkbox. So now this is the same kind of account screen, but it's different because I'm viewing someone else's account. So notice I can't like see his pending friend requests. I can, um, I can click on his friends list, but it actually probably won't won't let me if I remember correctly. Yeah, it says you have to be friends with them to, to view their friends list. So even if he did have friends, I wouldn't be able to see them because we are not friends. So if I actually go back to this guy, James, who I am friends with, and I click on James, notice that I can see his friends. So if I click here, it takes me to his friends list and I'm his only friend right now. So it says this is me. So if I go back and let's, uh, let's go back to the search here and click on somebody who's not my friend. And I guess the, the next thing to talk about here, if we go over to my, my feature section, is actually the friend system. So let's, let's talk about that. So the friend system, you have uh, four kind of basic, well, five basic operations you can do. You can send friend requests, accept them, decline them, cancel them, and remove them. So the first example is send a friend request. I can send a friend request to this guy right here. There, that will then send a friend request. And notice now his view has been updated for me saying that I can cancel it. So I have a, a pending friend request excuse me, that was sent out to him. So on his end, he can either decline it or accept it. Um, I don't, I th oh, I do actually have a, so remember earlier I had a pending friend request from Samuel. So if I go to my account and I go to friend request here, it says Samuel uh, actually sent me a friend request. So now the next thing is I can either accept it or I can decline it. So if I was to click accept, it should say no more results because I have no more pending requests. I also get a notification up here saying that I am now friends with Samuel. And if I go to my account, that friend request has been updated because now I'm friends with them. I also could have declined it, but I chose to accept it. Canceling is from the, um, the user who sends the request perspective. So if I search J again and I go to this guy who I sent a friend request to, I can cancel this friend request. So if I click cancel on this, the page will update and that, that pending friend request is now canceled. He's not gonna see anything on his end anymore. The last operation is removing friends. So let's go, uh, I guess I'll search J again and just choose somebody who I'm friends with. Here's James right here. I don't know who this is, just somebody who was nice enough to help me test my website. I can click up here. Well, there's actually a mess, uh, an option for messaging, but we'll talk about that later. I can click up here and I can go to unfriend. So if I do that, I'm no longer friends with James and we can't uh, send messages to one another. And I'm gonna talk about the messaging uh, in a little bit here. 
So that's the friend request system. Now you might have noticed up here that these numbers have been incrementing. This is actually the notification system. It tells me all about kind of the friend system when I've canceled the request, when I've removed a friend, when I've created new friends. And also if somebody sends me a friend request, it shows up in the notification and I can either accept it or decline it up here. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll actually log in with an incognito window and I'll log in with a different account. So I'm gonna go and log in with uh, somebody else's account. This is just a dummy email that I've added for testing. So this is, uh, that's my brother's name. It's not his real email. But if I go to and I search for Mitch, which is the account that I'm logged in with the other view, it says that we're friends. I'm gonna actually unadd him as a friend and then I'm gonna send him a new friend request. Now, if I minimize this and go back to the view with Mitch logged in, I check his notifications and he's got some new notifications. I'm no longer friends with Blake and Blake also sent me a friend request. So I can either accept or decline from this notification itself. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna leave this for now and I'm gonna come back and talk about these notifications later. Now, for now, we're gonna go and talk about the public chat system. So let's go to the home screen and here's the public chat system. Now, theoretically, I could have made like public chat rooms on the website. I just chose to make just a single one just to show you how it works but theoretically like after you watch this course you could build a website that has infinite number of public chat rooms I just have to happen I just happen to have one in this course just to kind of demonstrate so as I said earlier the public chat works by uh, basically any authenticated user as soon as they load this page they can now chat now it says up here also kind of like twitch.tv does it keeps account of who is logged into the chat. So right now it says one because I'm the only user who's logged into the chat. But if I was logged in with Blake and I go to the home page, notice now this number is two because both Blake and Mitch are present in this chat. So if I just said, hey, it's Blake in the chat here, that gets posted and if I go over here, notice in real time, the message shows up for Mitch also. So this is a real time chat room. The messages are coming in as anybody types them in. Now, I've also added Markdown support for this, so I could do like code snippets. And I've added support for Kotlin specifically, so if you wanted to add a Kotlin code snippet, you could do that, but let's just do a regular code snippet. So if you do three of these, I don't know what this actually is called, three of these symbols and you enclose it, everything inside, everything, everything inside this is code. So if I press enter, there is a code snippet that gets inserted into the real-time chat. And all of the chats in this project will, will support that, whether they're private messages or whether they're public chat rooms. Now there's also pagination on this public chat room and every other chat room in this project because there could theoretically be a million messages in here. So if I scroll up, what it'll do is it'll show a progress bar. It's gonna load the next 30 entries scroll up progress bar load the next 30 entries and it does a nice kind of pagination system for uh, loading chat messages because obviously like I said there could be you know theoretically infinite number of messages this chat also supports markdown so uh, if anyone knows what markdown it's a it's a way to render text to look better kind of like a fast way instead of writing like HTML so I could say like markdown title and I could say uh, you know this is markdown so if anyone knows how to use Markdown, this will be pretty obvious to you. This will do like an H1 tag, so like a title. This is going to bold, bold the word this, and then this is going to give italics to Markdown. So if I press enter, uh, there we have the Markdown being rendered into the chat. So pretty cool. Now the last feature is if I was to click on another user in the chat, so I could say this guy right here, the random seventh grader, if I click on his profile image or his name, it will take me to his profile. So if I click that, Boom, that then takes me to his profile. And it's gonna be like that for any other user in the public chat. If I click on Samuel, that will then take me to Samuel's um, Samuel's profile. The same for every user. So that's the public chat. Now if we scroll down, the next kind of feature here is the private chat room. So private chat rooms are one-on-one -on -one conversations. Just like on Facebook, for example, if you were to message somebody, that is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I could uh, open up a chat to this guy, because why not, I'm at his profile. I can do it several ways. I can either click message here inside of his profile. That will then take me to uh, a, a view that shows, I'm actually gonna make this a little bigger because it doesn't look that good. A view that shows a chat room with between him and I, and also on the right here, it shows a list of all of my friends. So if I was to click on like Blake, for example, that one that, that would then, um, oh, I'm actually not even friends with Blake anymore, so I can't chat with him. But if I was to click on somebody who actually is my friend, it then loads this chat room and loads our chat history. So just kind of like Facebook Messenger does. So I could say like, hey, and that would post a new message into our private chat. I could go to a different guy and say, hey, let's, let's, uh, 
or just say I'm testing chatting. I'm testing the chat. And then boom, it sends a new t a new chat message. And these uh, these messages up here, or this list up here, is organized in terms of who has sent me a chat message the most recently. So the person I chatted with recently was Blake. Second was Jessica. Uh, third was Adi. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Then Sleaze, and then so on and so on. So pretty cool feature. This this has all of the same features as the public chat. So you can do like code snippets. Uh, just do some code and you can do um, all the markdown stuff if i click on this it'll take me to his profile all the same kind of stuff pagination obviously and that's actually all the messages that he sent me now the next feature here is notifications so there's real-time notifications which you probably noticed up here so if someone sends me a friend request if someone removes me as a friend anything to do with friends all of these notifications show up in this kind of notification bar this also has pagination so if i scroll to the bottom it loads the next entries scroll to the bottom loads the next entries and so on and so on and I can accept or decline friend requests in here. So if I click accept or decline, it will take action on that request. There's also real-time notifications for chat messages. So here it says uh, recent chat messages. So look, Blake sent me a message that says, you have an appointment soon. Jessica says, hey, are you available? So if I was to like go to Jessica and click on here, it's, I would notice that, hey, yes, she did say that to me recently. Um, and also Blake says you have an appointment soon. So I, Blake was actually the one who was logged into here, I believe. So let's uh, let's actually accept Blake's friend request. That will enable us to be able to chat with him. And then I can go and click on the chat and that will take me to the chat room with Blake. So it said, I have an appointment soon. I could say, thanks for letting me know, you know, whatever I wanted to say to him. So pretty cool stuff. And uh, of course, these are all real time. So if I was to, I'll actually, close these so i'm no longer part of any private chat i'm not like connected actively connected now if i go to uh blake's chat here and i go to the chat with mitch so if i log in here and i say hey uh, i should get a notification over here in a second boom there's that uh that notification see that real red with the one that means i have one pending message and if i click this i have a new a notification from Blake, which was this one right here. This should have actually been cleared. I think this is a that's a bug. It probably didn't clear because I removed him as a friend or something like that. But um, I bet you if I refresh the page, that will resolve itself. Yeah. So there's that new message from Blake saying, "Hey," and if I click that, that will then take me to the chat room with Blake where he just said, "Hey." All right. So what is the next thing on the agenda here? Uh, oh yeah, so, the, so that was uh, friend requests, private messages, public messages, notifications, all that stuff. The last thing here is gonna be pushing to production. So like I said, I've launched this website live at openchat.xyz and I'm gonna show you how to do the same once we finish how to build this. So there's a lot of things actually involved in pushing this to production that make it kind of tricky. You need to use something called Daphne, which is a kind of a, a, a service or a tool that's maintained by the people who build Django channels, the library Django channels. They build it to make it simple to, to push Django channels to production because it's actually kind of a complicated process. You need to be able to configure Redis to manage your kind of a, a queuing system for the socket messages coming in. Um, yeah, and you need to be able to run this automatically have these services and processes start automatically when your server when your server starts so there's some tricky stuff there that that isn't normally or isn't usually associated with launching a website so i wanted to make sure that i i showed you how to do all that stuff so don't worry you know i'm showing you literally everything from starting the project starting the django project all the way to pushing it out to the real world so that's the demo, that's what we're building. And at the end of this, after everything, after we've built all this, I'm gonna be building an Android app to communicate with the website through WebSockets. And we're gonna be kind of doing a deep dive into Android notifications, push notifications. At least that's the plan as of today, right now, of course, if you guys know me, I, I tend to change plans because I like to just explore things when I get curious. But as of right now, my plan is to build the website and then build an app to communicate with the website over WebSockets and uh, handle kind of all the different push notifications. So that would mean like if you get a new chat message, you get a push notification. If you get a friend request, you get a push notification, all that kind of stuff. So that's it. Let's get started in the course.